On this episode of InCycle, we spend time in New Zealand with downhill mountain biker, Sam Blenkinsop. I feel like in the past I've done a lot of things the same, but now I've tried, as I'm getting older, I'm trying to change it up and do different things and, and keep it fun. And to coin in quick steps, Italian champ Elia Viviani discusses his career ups and downs. I'm really proud because I never win, never, in every category, in the young, in under 23, in the juniors, never win one tricolor on the road. When I was a child, I was a bit of a pain in the ass. <laughs> I was a uh, full-on bit of a handful and pretty much just wanted to go biking every moment I could. Sam Blenkinsop has been a big name in downhill mountain biking for over 15 years. Finishing in the top 10 at World Championships seven times, including a bronze medal at Champery in 2011, Sam's the only male Kiwi downhiller to win a World Championship medal. InCycle travelled to New Zealand and sat down with the notorious rider to learn more. So basically I got into riding through friends and my dad and I started riding and then I did some kind of races like Kiwi Kids Mountain Biking that was in Whanganui at the time. Did some of those and loved it and yeah basically started from there just rode my bike every day after school, rode every day and then had friends dirt jumping with them and did some national races and just grew from there really just had fun on my bike and just enjoyed riding every day and doing anything I could to be on my bike so when I was on my bike I was happy. For me, I like to try and kind of mix it up a little bit. I try and do a whole different varies of things like sports and I feel like in the past I've done a lot of things the same, but now I've tried, as I'm getting older, I'm trying to change it up and do different things and, and keep it fun. Because uh, once you get older, it, things get a little bit stale and then you get bored of things and you feel like you're just kind of doing, I know, the same routine as you've done in the past. So yeah, I like to do a bit of everything. I try and ride motocross once a week because that's just, if I wasn't racing down or then that's probably something I'd probably be more passionate about and do more of if I had the time. While Sam has been consistently competitive over the years, the 30-year-old has never won a national elite title and has dealt with an up and down few years since his 2008 World Cup win. I feel like in my racing at the moment, the, the hardest thing to get right is just linking everything together. You can always do sections really well, but I feel like just linking up a whole run perfectly, I think that it's, that's the thing as a racer, you're always trying to have everything perfect. So you're always picking away at things. So I don't think you will never be happy. If you were happy, then I guess you would kind of give up the sport, I guess, then you found everything and then you'd get bored, I guess. So for me, it's, I don't know, just keep picking away at things and then you'll keep progressing that way. If you don't get the results that you want, then it gets a little bit hard. You're like, oh man, what am I doing? But I'm still getting good results and I feel like I can still be on the top of the box most weekends when everything's going the right way for me. And so, yeah, that's, uh, I don't think I'm, I'm gonna be stopping anytime soon. One event that Sam has always remained a consistent frontrunner for is the Crankworks World Series. And after years of close calls, Sam finally took the title of King of Crankworks in 2018. Crankworks is, it's kind of like, if you were not really into mountain biking, this is a play, like an event that I'd tell you to go to because you'd, after watching that, you'd be like, oh, I want to get into the sport or I want to do something like this. And it's great for your kids too because there's just so much going on. 
because I remember when I was a kid, if, if there wasn't lots of different things going on or just one thing happening, I'd get bored really quick. So it's great for kids because there's like, you've got downhill practice over here and then you've got slope style practice over here and then you've got the races. Like, there's just so many things going on. The pump track, you've got speed and style, you've got, you name it. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's the, the mecca of mountain biking, I guess. My goals for uh, 2019 are just same as most of the years. I've changed up some of the things I've been doing, like training and other things in my mind and uh, whatever. But um, yeah, just keep it fun. Just feel coming to the season strong and then if I feel like I'm having fun and enjoying it, then the results come after that. It's always, it was a dream of mine to be a racer ever since I was at school. and. To be able to get paid to race is, uh, I think, every kid's dream that rides a bike, really. For years, Elia Viviani was seen more as a track rider who could mix it up in the sprints at world tour level. A wild card, a man who could catch out the big name sprinters, but never a favorite. There's not much Cipollini to him, let's put it that way. But um, I think the, the real cycling fans appreciate what he does and what he achieves. Yeah, he's not, he's not the superstar of the sport, on, not even in Italy, but he's the uh, you, know, you could say a working class sprinter is a real, you know, he's, he's a good guy and he's a good sprinter, so he gets lots of respect. And while the Italian's quiet temperament hasn't changed, his status most certainly has. When Viviani moved to the blue of what is now the coining quick step last year, his results moved him to the top of the headlines. 2018, when I approached this new team, this new adventure, it was the right move because in that moment, it's already one year I win the Olympics, I'm really focused on the road, and then I really need a support for, for my lead out, for my sprint. I want to have two, three guys, four guys, m more guys I can to, to try to win more race I can and to reach the best goal of my career. In 2015, a move from the now defunct Cannondale to the world's richest outfit, Team Sky, should have brought an upturn in fortune. However, in a team dominated by the ambitions of Chris Froome, Viviani lacked the support to realise his promise, only achieving limited successes. Team Sky were always thinking about GC and it really showed how good Ilya is as a sprinter. That's it, he was always on his own, he didn't have a lead out. I think he does prefer a clean lead out. Now with the clinic, he's you know, they target the sprints, so he gets the full support. And we've seen him step up to, I think, to a, a world-class top sprinter level. That's been helped by the all-for-one and one-for-all attitude of the coining quick step. And with some of the best lead-out specialists in the peloton on their team, the triumphs kept racking up in 2018. 2018 was really an amazing season for me from the start. There's Elia Viviani now. Now he's on the front. Viviani challenged by Grunewagen. It's tight again. Viviani puts his hand in the air. Dubai, another win. Uh, GC win, my first GC real race GC win in, in the car. The Giro was really an amazing feeling. Back on the Giro, my really... Uh, place on my with my fans after the Olympics it was the first time I'm back in the Giro so it was uh, really successful 21 days. What a win for Eli Viviani! Viviani reigns supreme! Viviani victory number four for Quickstep! A haul of four stages in the 2018 Giro meant Viviani also took home the fabled Ciclamino Sprinters jersey. The Ciclamino jersey I think is a sprinter dream to wear this jersey is like the green jersey in the tour. Petaki win wear the Ciclamino jersey, Bennati, Cipollini. I see my jersey and I think, oh, 
maybe in a few years or some other new sprinters I mean Ciclam in Jersey and dreaming to about to be like me. But the best was yet to come. The Italian championship, probably the best win of last year for me. After the finish line, the first guy I see is Yankee. <laughs> So he's celebrating like really a baby and then he is really emotional. He followed me during all the Giro, during all the preparation to this Italian championship and he know really well how important he is for me. La mia emozione l'anno scorso è stata grande al campionato italiano quando l'ho visto tagliare il traguardo per primo perché è stata la è stato il mio primo campionato italiano vinto come massaggiatore e anche in carriera e vincerlo con lui che c'è un rapporto di amicizia che è nato nel lontano 2010 nella squadra Liquigas e è stata una cosa di emozionante proprio ci siamo guardati e ammetto che a entrambi c'è stata un'emozione con una piccola lacrima agli occhi Viviani's triumph at the Nationals brought the number of Tricolore jerseys in his household to four. His girlfriend, Canyon Shram pro Elena Cecchini, is a former triple national champion. I'm really proud because I never win, never, in every category in the young, in under 23, in the juniors, never win one tricolor on the road. I'm still two Italian championship on the road behind her, so that is uh, difficult to reach, but she just said to me, enjoy all 365 days with this jersey every day, because it's quite an amazing feeling to wear this jersey. Viviani ended 2018 with 18 wins, including three Vuelta stages in the Tricolore, and started 2019 where he'd left off. From Australia and the Emirates, the Tricolore was heading to a first showing on home soil in the build-up to Milan San Remo. Everyone screaming my name in Italy, so um, Tirreno Adriatico of this year was the first race I do in Italy, and then, yeah, I can confirm this, it is amazing. After the gold in the Olympics, she asked me which one you want to win, I say Milan San Remo, so probably before every other race, other, I don't know, World Championship, European Championship, uh, Gun Velvegen, or at, at first in the top of this pyramid it's, it's, it's Milan San Remo. So that is the race of my, my dreams. That dream will have to wait another year at least. The coining quick step went to La Primavera with two aces in their hand. In the end, it was Julian Alaphilippe who prevailed. A strong showing in the Giro as national champion would be the next objective. But for Viviani, indeed, for the whole team, the experience was subpar. Everybody expected him to win and win a lot. For months, you know, he was the Italian national champion. He was really happy to win that jersey, I think, because he didn't really expect it. So he, he wanted to show it off at the Giro. Ilya changed the design of his jersey. I think he wanted that change in design, so he went to that, the vertical stripes instead of the traditional horizontal stripes. And I hope that didn't bring him bad luck. This movement, taking Moschetti of the Trek Segafredo squad over towards the barrier, was adjudged by the UCI jury to be a movement too far. He was convinced that there was no one nessuna scorrettezza e questo dispiace questa è stata una decisione della, della giuria l'abbiamo detto più di una volta no, no, non eravamo d'accordo ma alla fine sono loro che decidono e questo ha cambiato un po' tutti i piani e ci hanno portato via tanti punti della maglia ciclamino e non c'era più eh, anche l'obiettivo di poterla vincere lui lì è stato un po' un po' di alti e bassi e non siamo riusciti a vincere la tappa dove che era tanti anni che non succedeva però dobbiamo prenderlo, guardare avanti e guardare le prossime gare. Sights are now set on the Tour de France, something that might not have happened were it not for his Giro to forget. Sprinters always want to win. I understand that they're building a strong team for him for the Tour and I understand he's got Morkov and Riquezi as like lead up men. Um, he's had a contract, so he's writing for his future. But I, I expect him to do well in the tour and stay at the Koenig quick step. It remains to be seen now whether that Giro disappointment will lead to a stronger, more determined Viviani in July, and perhaps new successes in a race he's yet to crack.
That's all for now, but do join us next time. Until then, keep up to date on social media.